research and discovery. Futurists. In congested, polluted central London, they're researching the possibilities of making biofuels from poplar trees. They hope that soon, poplars will become a reliable, renewable source of biofuel. Well, the first thing that we need to do when we receive our wood samples is obviously grind all the material down to a uniform particle size. We need a, a biomass that will have high yield and also the right qualities for being able to then transform into a biofuel. The following step involves applying enzymes to it in order to digest the cell wall material and release the sugars that are held inside the, the woody biomass that you can see here. The next step is the fermentation of sugars into ethanol. The final stage is to uh, concentrate the alcohol and then it can be used as a fuel. It all starts in these greenhouses in Nancy, northeast France. Different varieties of poplars are being grown here. Widespread, fast growing, and so undemanding that they can grow on non agricultural land, poplars have been good candidates for biofuel production for years. The poplar has an amazing capacity for capturing solar energy. We can see that very well in these leaves, which are absorbing solar energy and transforming it into wood and biomass. But scientists working for a European Union research project called Energy Poplar aren't just looking for any old tree. They're looking for a super poplar. We want to select a poplar which will grow very fast, produce lots of wood and will simultaneously be efficient at using minerals and which will have the minimum impact on the environment. Here, they're researching natural ways of improving growth. For example, they've added various fungi to the roots of these samples. After one, two or five months, we check whether the fungi has interacted with the plant roots, if it's formed a symbiosis with them. Often we can already see with the naked eye that the roots look swollen. That is often a sign that interaction has taken place. We can confirm it under the microscope. Molecular analyses have confirmed that certain fungi help some trees to grow faster and more robustly. This type of interaction means the plant can get more nutrition, which means bigger, better growth. It's a big discovery for us because it's a common symbiosis in natural ecosystems, whether they're in forests or cultivated plantations. We put it through a grinder and then we sieve um, to a certain particle size, bag that up and then it's ready for the sacrification process. Back in London, the quest to extract sugars from poplar wood goes on. What we're trying to do is to find the optimum cell wall structure in poplar that is both makes a resilient plant, one that will grow well and yield a lot of biomass, but will also be much easier to process in that next quite difficult step which is to extract the sugars. Identifying sugar-laden poplars is one of the aims of this giant plantation in Orléans, central France. 
around 2,700 different poplars, all from successive controlled crossings, grow here. Researchers want to identify the most resilient and productive trees in open-air conditions. We're trying to collect trees which start growing relatively early in the season, when conditions are favourable. Then we're trying to find a tree that grows several shoots at once after pruning. We'll be looking for shoots which develop the maximum foliage. We'll also be looking for species which resist the diseases which can attack them throughout the year. Selecting a resilient poplar that also produces a lot of cellulose requires patient research and a few imaginative tricks. These trees are leaning over for a good reason. We're using them to study tension wood. Tension wood is a specific growth which occurs all through the life of a tree and which allows it to resist wind and being pushed over. It means a tree can make its trunk and branches go back to the right position. Molecular analyses confirm that this tension wood is richer in cellulose and thus in sugars than normal wood. We can colour the tension wood, this tension wood which we find here. And this colouration reveals the cellulose, which shows up in blue. So straight away we see the part of the wood, the tension wood, which is rich in cellulose and thus in sugars. We're going to take our ground poplar material over to the biochemistry lab, um, at which point we will um, expose it to cellulitic enzymes and see how much glucose can be derived from all these various poplar. All we're left with is hopefully our solution which contains our glucose, which we can then move forward and um, analyse through high performance liquid chromatography. It produces a graphical representation of the glucose. The size of the peak is indicative of how much glucose we have in our sample. It's carbon storage, it's high growth rate, and uh, if we can get the ease of conversion and facilitate conversion of the biomass into biofuel, we can end up with some very, very good um, greenhouse gas savings compared with gasoline. Um, very significant ones, perhaps 90% saving over gasoline is achievable here, which means we can effectively decarbonize quite large parts of the transport sector. Research to break the cellulose barrier continues as European scientists promise a new dawn for biofuels, with poplars as key suppliers.